Technology and Common, in Common Inspection Framework webinar. My name is Lynn Lal. I work for the RSC East Midlands as an e-learning advisor. And we're joined today by Alistair Taylor, who carries out inspections uh, for Ofsted. And I'm hoping he's going to share some really useful insights with us today. If you want to participate in the session, a um, couple of things to let you know about. First of all, there is a polling button just above the list of participants names there. So we might ask you to um, contribute in that way. If you want to ask a question, then you can raise your hand, please and also post your questions in the chat pane. The session is being recorded, and all of the resources from the session will be available on our Moodle site um, shortly after the session. And there will also uh, be links to additional resources. So the first thing I'd like to do um, is introduce Sorry, I'll introduce Alistair. So, Alistair, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and your role. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, you probably can see my little video clip up there. I've put a tie on especially for you today, um, although I'll be taking it off pretty soon, I would imagine. So my name is Alistair Taylor. Um, I'm, my background is engineering, science, technology. Um, spent a big part of my career working in the land-based sector. Um, work uh, for myself these days. I do a little bit of part-time inspection work for Ofsted and um, got involved with this through some work we were doing with JISC up in the northwest um, around the very same topic. Um, so really, you know, the work I do observing, teaching and learning in HE and FE at all sorts of levels, inspecting for Ofsted, sort of having a technology background myself, I think gives me a useful insight into what we need to be thinking about and what we need to be looking for going forward, um, if only to keep the Ofsted inspectors sweet. But Probably because it's a good thing to be doing anyway. So uh, that's a little bit about me. What you see is what you get. Got a sense of humour. We'll probably uh, offend one or two of you on the way, but um, hopefully we'll have an enjoyable 45 minutes. Okay. Back to you, Lynn. Thank you. Um, I'm going to turn my video off now um, so that it doesn't distract from um, the presentation and, and what uh, Alistair's got to say. So the first thing that we'd like to know about you is a little bit about your role. So if you could use the drop-down menu above the list of participants to let us know about your role in your organization. Are you a manager, a classroom practitioner, a learner support person, or business support? Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Gordon. Uh, so it looks like we've got quite a mix in here today, a lot of managers and uh, business support people and a few practitioners and learner support. So quite a good mix. Thank you for that. Um, and also, what sector are you far from? So um, we might just need to, I know, we've got all the options there for you. What sector are you from? So again, use the drop down menu, please, to tell us which sector you represent. If you're from HE, could you choose option uh, E, please? Thank you again. So it looks like we've got a lot of FE or HE and FE people, and uh, quite a few from work-based learning and ACO as well, and just uh, a couple from sixth form colleges. Thank you. And finally, it might be useful to know um, who's been through the uh, inspection under the new common inspection framework. Mm It's looking to be a reasonable mix here between uh, half of you have been inspected and half of you haven't. So those of you who have been inspected, it might be useful if at times you could um, chip in with any observations from, from your own experiences. So I'm going to hand over to Alistair now, and um, he's going to get started on his presentation. So thank you, Alistair. Oh, well, well, um, 
um, interesting to see all your backgrounds. Curious to see how many of you have been inspected under the new um, framework. That's very, very interesting. Um, as I should, I'll share with you some of the broader objectives we're seeking to achieve here. Um, I think um, it, it's interpreting what Ofsted are, are interested in, and uh, I'm not going to read the slides out verbatim, but, but clearly there's, there's the role of technology and employability, particularly in the vocational areas. But then, of course, there's the role of technology as, as part of the teaching and learning process. So I'm going to be focusing on both of those. Um, I want you to sort of walk away with some of the ideas and tools, and, uh, and which is probably very timely given its self-assessment season, so that you can um, make those sort of judgments in your self-assessments about the role of technology, how it's being used, the impact of it, um, how it's being used to enhance the, the learner's experience, and so on. And, and also, one of the questions I'm going to pose to you in a few moments is about what your expectations are, about what we should see in the classroom as a bare minimum. Um, and I think we also we need to touch on um, the, the VLE and um, sort of we could spend all day, couldn't we, talking about whether it's a truly integrated approach or whether it's a repository and, and obviously touch on social media as well. So quite a lot to cover in a short period of time, so I'm going to march on. And um, w one of the, the first things I, I want you to consider, and this is where we might wish to chip in, but this is where a few one-worders thrown into the chat pane at the bottom would be certainly helpful. Um, if you want to consider those two questions in red there, um, what should we expect in the classroom, and what sort of skills and uh, technology should we really expect our learners to walk away with? As a bare minimum, I think that would be a, a useful thing to get on the table to um, sort of uh, set the um, starting point, really. So um, I'm, I'm going to pause for just a few moments to let you reflect upon those questions and um, maybe pop a few things into the chat pane for, uh, for, for 10 seconds or so. So definitely we want to see, and Ofsted will want to see, engaged learners. Thank you, Becky. Absolutely stretch and challenge and supporting both in and out of the classroom. And I think evidence that learner skills are being developed, particularly digital literacy skills from an employability point of view. I'll start talking now again. Um, I mean, there's some really useful things coming out there, and, and, and I'm sure as we carry on talking, you'll be able to pop a, a few things in. But really putting on my Ofsted hat, I mean, the first thing I would, would share with you really is let's not lose sight of the obvious. Um, and I just popped a few diagrams up there just to illustrate this uh, of things I've seen on my travels. Uh, you know, motor vehicle, for example, someone using a laptop, looking at the settings, of, you know, emissions, things like that on a, a car. Um, diagram there of, of someone milking a cow. Some of the technology in that sector is incredible with pedometers and telemetry and all sorts of data collection systems to allow students to sort of manipulate that data and link it really truly back to business. Um, in sports, the sort of technology we're using for golf swing analysis, and of course, even, even in construction, which I think many of us would think of as being a, a very, very vocational subject, there's a lot of technology coming through. And I guess a point I'd want you to walk away with at this stage is, is you know, don't forget that. Um, and a lot of it is, is very easy to forget when we sort of set our hearts on how we use technology to enhance learning. But it could be. There's a lot of really good stuff going on in your institutions. and um, you know, you can't see it, you know, you, you, it's too close to you really. So just do bear that one in, in mind. I mean, the key thing here is all about impact. Um, and um, I've been to a few places in my travels where there's a fantastic array of technology available, but it really doesn't make any, any difference. So, um, you know, the first point there, good technology does not always mean good quality teaching and learning. You need to think about that really. Um, the, sometimes um, modest technology can be used in a wonderful way to truly enhance learning. And just, that's just worth bearing in mind. So the question for me as an inspector is really how well is it used? Um, and clearly we're, we're very bothered about um, particularly in the vocational areas, employability, progression, things like that. And so um, stuff that is technically 
uh, up to date and meaningful and relates to employment and so so on and so forth. I think is is very very important in you know in terms of of, of enhancing the learning experience. Um, I guess the challenge is keeping up to date with the technology as it rapidly moves forward, but um, making sure it's relevant is really really important. But I think a point you need to just reflect upon that technology on its own is not a strength. It's the way it's used that makes it a strength. So as you go through the self-assessment process, you might want to be um, thinking about that. And I'll share one or two comments with you presently on the sorts of judgments that you might think about making. Moving on, um, I think it's worth reflecting upon the sorts of um, questions which you might get asked if you're being inspected. And uh, I, I would imagine those of you who have been inspected recently may well have been asked um, questions like these questions which I put up on the uh, on, on, on the uh, blackboard for you there um, you know it's all very well it's all very good but is it effective uh, how is it being used um, I think another interesting thing is is how it's being linked in in the, um, the scheme of work the scheme of learning the lesson plan and, and how the work the teacher does routinely thinks about how they can harness the technology in a meaningful way in the classroom to bring it alive. And I'll share with you one or two examples later on of things I've seen that have quite impressed me. Um, and um, really, a lot of people in their planning process probably think about process. Uh, and maybe they don't think enough about, well, what's the impact of my using this technology? What is the outcome I'm seeking to achieve by um, using the technology uh, in a meaningful way to enhance the learning experience? So thinking through its impact, I think, is a very important message that teachers need to do to enhance how they apply it. Of course, then the other question is: Is the way learners are using the technology which they're presented with? You know, that simple question: Are they using it as intended? Um, and of course, that's a challenge. Uh, but I do think we've moved on, haven't we, from uh, not very many years ago where you would see a teacher berating their students for using mobile phones and such like, to to a, a real movement where. I see teachers frequently telling uh, students and learners, you know, get out your mobile phone, you've got a calculator on there, you've got a video camera on there, take a picture of your work and use it in your, your evidence portfolio. Um, record some feedback or something like that. So I think, you know, um, we have moved on quite a lot and I think attitudes are changing. I think the other question really is, you know, does it truly aid learning? And certainly looking at some of the comments that you've put in the uh, chat pane there, I think uh, one or two of you said it does to be does need to be meaningful and add to learning, and I think you've certainly linked to that. But um, uh, sometimes you do see it being used just to entertain, and uh, you know, that's not good enough. It needs to be meaningful and really planned in a meaningful way. And of course, the, the 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 big question, and it's such a complex question to answer, is how do we measure the the learning that takes place as a result of this? And so. You need to think about the, the ways in which learning is measured, which I suppose takes us to assessment and all the various feed and feedback mechanisms which we use to assess the progress our learners are making. So, so do bear that one in mind as well. So let us move on and um, I'm just to show you a slide and then immediately after that I'm um, going give to give you an opportunity to share some practice using the chat pane. So just be ready for that in, in a slide or so's time. But um, just to share with you the sorts of judgments that I think I would like to see being made in, um, in self-assessment reports. And I guess, given that it's this time of year when many of you are thinking about your self-assessment reports uh, and probably thinking about the sorts of things that um, you could say, uh, and bearing in mind the need to link that to the Common Inspection Framework and you know, any forthcoming inspections, you know, there's four suggested bullet points there which you might you might or might not use, you know, good demonstration of skills required for application of occupational technologies, excellent application of current industry technologies to develop employment skills, uh, good development of, for progression into high quality employment opportunities, good development of apprentices skills through work with technology in the workplace. I'll tell you a little bit about that. I had the great pleasure of visiting the Rolls-Royce um, apprenticeship school in, in, in Derby and um, fascinating use of technology there. For example, 3D spectacles and a 3D glove which allowed the uh, user to put their hand into an aeroplane engine, not moving of course, to uh, take out and replace a component and check whether it fitted or check whether it interfered with any other components on the way. 
So there really is some fantastic stuff going on, certainly in engineering and technology, which is very relevant to this. Now I'm going to pause at this little point and um, go to the next slide because I think it would be really useful for you to pre contemplate on some of the little judgments I put up there and pop in to the chat pane um, some of the things that um, you know you might want to put about strengths about what you do um, and I know Lynn's going to um, uh, dip in and say a few words as well at this point. Um, yes, hopefully I've shared a link with you um, in the chat pane to a Google Doc and it would be nice if you could um, share any examples of effective use of technology in your organization. If there's anything that uh, Ofsted's commented on specifically as good practice, it'd be good to share that as well. I think we'll just pause for a few moments to give you an opportunity to, to do that. And um, then I know Lynn will probably take control of it at some stage and be able to share with us what we can all see. But um, yeah. I'm sure she'll tell me if I've got that wrong. Yes, I will. Don't worry too much about spelling. <laughs> I think she probably just told me. I don't know what you think. So we've got use of smart board activities to use smart boards interactively. Because a lot of the time, I suspect they're not used interactively. Flexible delivery methods, using technology to en enable flexible delivery. Presume that means um, using learner's own devices maybe to access web-based resources via your VME. Electronic ILPs. So learners know exactly where they are, can keep referring to their targets, can monitor progress and support your learners. Some good ones here. Using Google to share and collaborate as we're doing at this very moment. It's OK if you want to put some stuff in the chat pane as well, by the way. We will be able to capture all of this afterwards and share it with everybody. So when you're ready for me to move on, Lynn, do say. Yeah, OK. Well, thank you for those contributions. There's a lot of good um, effective use of technology being mentioned there. Padlet as well. We will share this with people um, after the session. So we'll move back, thank you, to um, your presentation. Well, I'm now going to go back to first principles. And for those of you who've done your Cert Ed, you'll probably remember good old Bloom's taxonomy. Um, and um, actually it's very easy to forget about it, isn't it, really? We, we teach, we get on with the job, we, we do all this stuff when we, we do our, our, our Cert Ed. But um, revisiting is quite helpful. and. Um, one of the things I've, 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 um, I've got to share with you just on the next slide is the fact that um, this has been interpreted in, in, in digital language. And um, what you've got in front of you there, which I hope you can all see, is um, um, a, a version of this which is just uh, it, it's an image really copied from the, from the web. It's no more than that, uh, which um, really suggests when you look through the different levels of um, learning which are espoused through Bloom, the sorts of language which might be used within the digital taxonomy, as it's called. Um, and one of the messages for you to take away, I think, is how you can encourage teaching staff as they plan their schemes of work and plan their learning to use this sort of language and use this sort of terminology within their, um, within their lessons. Um, I think that would be a very interesting thought process for many to go through. The other thing I would add, of course, is that um, some of you, and um, I'm looking on the list here, there's 49 of us signed in on this at the moment, and I imagine some of you, if not many of you, will be involved with observing teaching and learning and observing lessons. And uh, it strikes me that um, using this sort of language when you observe teaching and learning to, to reflect what you're seeing, assuming you're seeing it anyway, I think is um, a very helpful thing to do in terms of developing feedback. Although uh, I, uh, I challenge any one of you under the word analyzing 
to use the word mashing because I think that's a super word and I, if, you know, if I see that being used in an observation report I'll be mightily impressed so uh, just something for you to think about there um, but uh, you know I thought it was worth reflecting upon Bloom's taxonomy and the digital language which could be used um, I'm also quite amused by the word hacking there under applying um, I'm not quite sure we should be encouraging our students to do too much of that but um, something to think about anyway moving on um, other sorts of judgments which I think you might be thinking of in terms of your of your self-assessment of course um, the sorts of likely the sorts of language which I'm using here are perhaps more the sort of things which you would see under leadership and management um, or you might see them a little bit under uh, teaching and learning uh, but um, you know for example um, the way the curriculum is designed so that it embeds a blended approach and you know harnesses ILT in, in, in a supportive way I think is very very important um, I'm a big believer in, in, in getting a true understanding of, of, of the learner journey I haven't put a slide in of that in this presentation but of course it is a bit of a process and all the stuff that goes on up front the initial, initial assessment the identifying barriers to success the setting of targets and everything IT solutions and technology solutions to support that process through individual learning plans and everything that wraps around that is so important uh, and then of course monitoring the learning and setting new targets and reflecting upon the progress that's being made is, is vitally important now as someone who respects for Ofsted and as someone who visits many many colleges and, and you, I'll let you be the judge of this but um, I see uh, packages and platforms such as um, the ProMonitor things like that some places being used fantastically well um, other organizations have their own in-house systems and again using them very very effectively um, but in too many places you know they're not being used as well as they might so so do think about that and be mindful also that um, one of the big debates within the common inspection framework these days is about really added value and progression you know what do you do to add value to your learners to identify what they need and, and add to that so that they walk away with meaningful success and I think anything you can do to use technology to, to, to measure that to show that to help students understand what they need to do to improve has to be very very good so the design of the curriculum very very important um, and of course the other thing which I think uh, you will find in many sectors is uh, how employers are being used as really productive partners to allow students to access technologies which they couldn't access in college um, you know, I think of a college I used to work in which was within the land-based sector um, there was no way we could afford some of the uh, very technical things which, which, which you need to show the students you know hundreds of thousands of pounds but by working with industry you could um, access that and I'm going to share something with you which is potentially hot off the press um, some of you may be familiar with the Commission for Adult Vocational Teaching and Learning I, I was a commissioner on that commission and we reported back in March and this is about the role of, of um, vocational teaching and, and, and an awful lot of good practice going on in this country but one of the recommendations coming out of that is something called Teach Too the concept being that people from industry um, should be harnessed in a much more productive way to come in to colleges to support the um, the, the development of te technology really so um, and, and certainly Ofsted are, are, are in on the mix on this and are very interested in, in that as well and I guess we'd shy away from having a visiting speaker in from industry at the time of an inspection but uh, we might be going full circle on that and, and there might be a view that that's a really good thing to be doing because our students need to hear from employers and representatives of employers and technicians about these current technologies but the sad thing is we're more likely to see a judgment come from Ofsted which is the one at the bottom of the page there you know the use of technology including the college's VLE is poor I think I just took that straight out of an inspection report and sadly we see that sort of language too um, often so if we go back to the process of um, um, self-assessment I think the next slide and Lynn might want to add a little bit to this um, is, is about how to uh, consider the impact so uh, I'll hand over to Lynn to say a few words about the uh, the next slide thank you I mean measuring impact is always a difficult thing to quantify as to whether you, how you can relate it back to technology and I've been working with um, an ELSIS project um, on a tool to support self-assessment with effective use of technology called Raptor 
Um, and one of the ways that they're trying to um, quantify or put into context impact is to try and use the, the double negative statement. So to ask the question, what would not have happened if you hadn't have done this with technology? So here we've got a set of uh, learner entitlement statements here. And if we take um, entitlement number four, students can continue to learn during periods of agreed absence. So how could technology have an impact there? Well, here's a statement of, of what happened at one provider. If they hadn't introduced Moodle, 20 of their students on long-term sickness during the term time would not have been able to stay on the course and um, achieve and stay on track. So the question, what would not have happened if you hadn't have introduced Moodle, you would have lost a lot of those learners and all the, the funding that went with them and the achievements and the statistics as well to support your um, achievement and success rates. Another example here uh, for entitlement number six. Where desirable, learners will be able to use their own software and hardware to access teaching and demonstrate learning. That's really to do with are you supporting your learners to be able to use their own smartphones and devices within your organization? So for instance, then you might be able to say, if you hadn't set up a robust campus-wide Wi-Fi system, students wouldn't be able to bring their own devices to, to support um, teaching and learning. So that use of that double negative question, what wouldn't have happened if we hadn't done this, can sometimes lead you to some useful statements for your self-assessment. I'll chip in with a, with a comment there. I was um, mindful the, the 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 one in red there about the introduction of Moodle allowing students on long term sick to uh, access things. Um, you know, I was looking at you all as you were signing in. I noticed quite a few of you have come, uh, are in from South Devon, and um, you know, I I think something to think about is the rurality as well. And uh, I live in Shropshire. Uh, I'm uh, it's near Shrewsbury. That's where I am today. And We've got a lot of high-speed broadband in the county where I live. There's a project going on to uh, enhance and in improve our high-speed broadband within the rural area. And, and I think there's a very important consideration there, particularly for, for learners who might be having to get on a bus for a couple of hours. Um, how can we harness technology to support their learning um, uh, and, and help them learn remotely? I think there's some really interesting concepts which I think we can develop and, and take forward. So moving on, I'm going to say a few words now about the VLE. And um, there is a bit of a danger, I think, um, that it, it has in many places become too much of a repository. Now, I'm not saying a repository is unimportant, because we clearly do need a repository for the information which our students need to access. But if I'm observing a lesson, I want to be seeing the sorts of things which are listed underneath the red title there. You know, I want to see the signposting. I want to see teachers who, who might um, access the VLE to show things to the students and to um, help them understand how they can harness it and um, maybe part of assessment. So a requirement from the assessment program is that it requires the students to access the VLE to find some work. Um, you know, the hot links, the links to YouTube, things like that, to, to take students to places where they can enhance their, their learning. And of course, um, I noticed one of you popped the word pedagogy into the chat pane. And um, as part of pedagogy, um, I think there is an expectation that we have something for our gifted and talented. Um, it's about stretching our more able students. I think we're very good at supporting our weaker students. We're not so good at stretching the more able ones. And so that's a real opportunity to use technology to, to support that process. And I have seen that done in some uh, in colleges where if, uh, tablets, iPads, and things like that have, have been used to provide extension activities. Clearly, the VLE has a role in revision. But what I want to see is a VLE which is part of the whole deal, part of the whole package, sort of woven in with the scheme of work and the, and, and the general plan for the program. Um, now, I think uh, when it comes to interactive learning, uh, clearly there's a massive resource implication for interactive learning. And um, uh, if we can use the VLE to give our students access to interactive learning, however that might look, I think that's something we, we need to be aspiring to do as well. Um, I don't see enough of it going on. I really don't. But that's the sort of stuff I'm looking for when I um, look at the VLE. So I've got some things which you might want to consider, which I'm going to put on the next slide. So be ready to pop a few things into the chat pane if you wish. But the questions I'm going to pose are, my, are really more rhetorical questions, really. 
which you might want to take away and consider. Um, you know, there's three there. You know, how do we make the VLE more than a repository? But I think my middle question there, and um, I think uh, I'm the last one as well in some ways. I think it's something I'm observing as 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 time goes by. I'm seeing technology moving on very very quickly, and I'm just asking the question: Is it moving quicker? particularly in the classroom, the teaching and learning technology, the use of iPads, tablets, those sorts of things, is that actually moving more quickly than the VLE? So, so um, will we, in five years' time, and I pose the question, this is something for you to muse over, will VLEs be old hat? Will there be something else? I don't know. Someone might have a view on that, but I think it's an interesting point for us to consider at this stage. But I ask the question in a slightly provocative way, because I think and this is me speaking as an Ofsted additional inspector, I think there's a, a job to be done to make sure that Ofsted inspectors are aware of that because I think there is always a risk that someone who, who hasn't been in the classroom recently um, might not be aware that the technology is moving on much quicker than the concept of the VLE. So I think um, you know, if we're moving the technology on and the VLE is no longer a big part of our world because we're doing something else which is better, um, I don't think we should be scared of of, of, of highlighting that and making something of it. Anyway, moving on, provocative question, something for you to think about. Um, um, there's, a, there's a link here, I'm, I'm not going to go there, and, or I think Lynn will be going there, but the Ofsted have actually provided a whole range of really useful information. Um, and, you know, it, I, I'm very supportive of Ofsted in this respect. And uh, that link there, and the link which I think has been popped down into the chat pane for you, and I think where we're going on the web tour will give you a bit of a view as to some of the stuff that's available from Ofsted to support this process. I will pause for a moment whilst that uh, appears on, on my screen and your screen. Not appearing on my no, screen, so no, clearly the high-speed high broadband hasn't made it to my part of Shropshire no. quite yet. Sorry. Should be coming up now. <coughs> okay. Hopefully some of you are familiar with this site and have already explored it. Um, it was quite nice for me to actually see Ofsted engaging with some of these new technologies um, like using um, Extra Normal, for instance, to do this little presentation with this avatar as an introduction to the whole resource. So there are some, some really useful uh, resources in there and comments about what Ofsted inspectors have seen that is effective use of technology. And you can download uh, the whole lot as a zip file um, and look at all of the different sections and there really are some excellent links to um, resources and case studies as well and links from particular inspection reports. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you. Brilliant. Oh. As I look at the avatar there, I think I've realised, uh, I know this is being recorded but I'll say it anyway, I think I can now see where Michael Gobes got his new glasses from. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we'll go back to uh, the presentation. Thank you. Definitely worth a look if you haven't already seen that. I, I would definitely endorse that. So do go and have a look at that if you haven't already. So moving on, conscious that we've only got 10 minutes or so to uh, play with, I wanted to say a little bit about um, tablets and, and that sort of technology. And um, this is where I'm seeing a lot of development. And, and I find it very, very exciting. And uh, I, I sense we're, we're only at the beginning of that particular journey. Um, I suppose, you know, I think in my personal life, I have an iPad. My 87-year-old mother has an iPad, and we FaceTime. And I just think that's fabulous. That's fantastic. And, uh, you know, I think it's made, um, particularly for those of you who deal with adult learners, I think it's a very accessible technology, which uh, I think helps to overcome some of the barriers which we've dealt with hitherto. But anyway, you know, how, where, am I, where am I seeing tablets being used well? Um, actually, it's, it's where they're being used in more practical and vocational situations I'm impressed the most. Um, and the, the example I share with you there is something I saw in a college, and it was, uh, for those of you involved with sort of uh, construction, may well have an electrical workshop or a plumbing workshop. And this particular situation ha had a, a series of booths. Each booth would be oh, two meters square, and it's where the students would fit some, fit some electrical fittings to the wall and, and, and all the rest of it. And in the corner of each booth, there was an iPad mounted to the wall. Um, and uh, in, in effect, I was seeing individual learning, because each student was tasked with their own project. There were video clips there showing them how to do something. 
you know, the specification for fitting a, a, a socket to the wall or whatever it might be. But also, of course, they could use the device for recording their assessment and there were cameras on their calculators and they could go online to research something if, if they wanted to. And, and that just struck me as fabulous use of that technology within a practical situation. And I was talking to someone the other day who said that they're using that within hospitality and catering now. So the recipe is there and, and, and video clips showing how to, you know, make something or whatever it might be. And I was very struck by that, particularly within a practical and vocational situation. So I um, don't know if any of you are doing that, but um, that struck me as something you needed to consider. The other um, thing which is perhaps worth your while considering, and, and maybe these are, are questions for you to take away and discuss with your staff, but uh, you know, how are your teaching staff using these as part of their teaching and learning? But I, I suppose one of the difficult questions, and there's no, no easy answer to this, is there is how we deal with the haves and the have-nots, you know, this, this so-called digital divide. Although the haves and have-nots, so far as I can work out, are the students have smartphones and the teachers don't have smartphones. But of course, um, you know, some of this technology is coming in down, down in price such that if we do have someone who's disadvantaged, we ought to be able to help them out. But of course, you'll get some teachers who are so risk adverse, they'll say, well, you know, I won't be using that technology because one person who doesn't have it will be um, disadvantaged. So the other 29 in the group, or how, however many, don't get the opportunity to access. These are tricky questions. You need to think about it. And there's a question for you there. What's a reasonable price to pay for a tablet? You might want to pop that into the chat pane. Now I'm hearing, um, I'm hearing you. Well, I think you want to say something, then, don't you? Yeah, there's been some interesting uh, discussions going on in the chat pane while we've been speaking about which are the best devices, Apple versus Android, uh, and obviously it's down to personal preference. But um, if we think about the way technology is moving and the smartphone ownership, as Dan said, about 70% of the student body, um, according to a latest Ofcom survey, have got their own technology, then maybe we don't need to be thinking too much about the technologies we might put into our organizations because we're going down the bring your own device route and more and more of our learners will have access to the, the technology that's familiar to them, that they're familiar with how to use. And I agree that it's very frustrating. I think was it Jackie was saying that um, the lecturers haven't got access to the technology, but of, often the learners have. And Judy's made a good point there about your regional sports centres. You might be able to loan some kit before you want to make a decision about what you're going to buy. Yeah, some really good stuff coming through there around Flash and. Um, various apps and things which can be used to do that. So I'm learning here myself, so thank you very much everyone. Really useful stuff. Yeah. So moving on, conscious of time. Um, one of the other interesting things I'm, I'm coming across on my travels are the use of QR codes. And uh, I'll share some examples with you. The, the diagram there, I just took it, uh, it was, I was in Wales for a long weekend at Betsico and, and of course that was used in the tourist information centre too. It was at the railway station too link you to you know what you could do in the town um, and but um, you know QR codes very interesting things and this is of course where I share with you the fact that, that I grabbed the image of the QR code from the image library on, on Google and put it there and as I was preparing this I thought to myself oh no what if it links to some horrendous pornography website thankfully if you point your device at that QR code, it will take you to, I think, a private school somewhere in the south of England. So we're uh, quite relieved about that, very fortuitous. Uh, but anyway, let me tell you about some of the examples um, I've come across where QR codes are being used. And it's the next slide, really. Um, hospitality, I've seen QR codes being used so that a, a smart device could be linked to that. And on the VLE are videos and recipes and bits and pieces. Uh, so it was a link to the right part of the VLE so the student could see what they needed to do to make some whatever. Um, in a land-based college, I saw um, every cage in the animal management department have a little QR code on the cage, and that linked to videos and voice clips about the animal, its habitat, um, where it uh, lived, what it liked to eat, whether it would bite you, all those sorts of things. And interestingly, there were level one QR codes, level two QR codes, and level three QR codes. I thought that was quite interesting. Um, similarly, I've seen something in hair and beauty. Um, I've seen it used with um, entry level uh, students. So they were using the technology to go and find out about things and match things and find things and research, which they were enjoying a great deal. Um, and in the one example I was talking about, the animal management one, 
the um, information on the VLE was actually being populated by the students themselves. So, so it was the higher level students who were going out, you know, recording a, a video on a flip camera, doing a little bit of a narration, gathering some information together. And so you're sort of getting two hits, really. You're getting the learners using the technology to find out about the animal, but you're also getting the students to use technology to, to, to populate the VLE with the information. And that just struck me as, as a really nice approach. So I think you know there's some really exciting stuff which I'm coming across, which which I like to be honest when when I see this. So you know, the question for you really um, is is for you to think about that. And again, you might want to pop this in the chat page. Some of the things you're up to, uh, any good examples you might want to share of how you're using QR codes and things like that, um, and ideas as to where you could take it, new things you could do, um, and um, I guess you know that rhetorical question there, you know. Is this going to replace the VLE, or or is is it going to bring the VLE alive? So uh, all sorts of questions and points for you to um, for you to consider there. Yeah, there's been a lot of sharing already going on about how people use uh, QR codes. Um, I don't know if anybody was on the webinar the other day, but all the resources will be on our Moodle, uh, which we'll link you to after the session, about how um, motor vehicle department at Loughborough College are using um, iPads in the motor vehicle workshop and how they use um, QR codes to help with classroom management um, so that learners didn't have to keep going back to the teacher to find out what they should be doing, what the tasks were, what the next targets were, what signpost them to resources as well. Um, and it was used also to sort of di differentiate and direct learners to different resources. So that was an excellent use as well. Um, and I don't know if anybody's mentioned their augmented reality, which seems to be um, another buzz um, technology that's being um, piloted and tried in a few organizations at the moment as well. Yep. So we've got lots um, of sharing going on there, some great stuff. Yeah. Which, which is brilliant. So uh, thank you for that. And I know I think you'll be, am I right, Lynn? You'll be able to access some of this chat afterwards. Absolutely, yes. Being said. So yes. that's really good stuff. So thank you very much for that. Colleagues, we've only got sort of a few more minutes to go. And I know some of you might want to be dropping out of this uh, at, at some stage, but uh, probably another five minutes and uh, I'll have got to where I, I want to get to. So um, the uh, other area I just wanted to say a little bit about was, was, was of course, social social media and, and, and I posed the question at the very the very beginning there about you know is it a safeguarding issue and, and clearly that is something we have to be very mindful of. But I I suppose the issue for me is that um, sometimes the safeguarding issue means that organizations are so very risk adverse that really exciting opportunities, you know, don't happen. And I, I somehow think we've got to try to overcome that and think of a way in which we can harness social media in a meaningful way and, and not um, let the safeguarding issues uh, be a problem. So, you know, yes, it is a problem. Yes, it is a challenge, I would agree. But I think it's a solution to so many things. And I know one of the things which Ofsted are very bothered about in inspections and the learner outcomes, and those of you who have been inspected will be very aware of this, is, of course, um, learners' progression, where they go when they're finished. I think we're probably pretty good at having information on what they do internally, internally, you know, level one, level two, level three, into higher education. But I'm not sure we're very good at knowing accurately what they do six months down the line. Um, some colleges are harnessing alumni to do this. I'm at my university was Keele University. I get an email from them most weeks finding out what I'm up to and all the rest, uh, which is fantastic. But I'm sure social media has a fantastic role to play in terms of keeping up with students, finding out what they're doing when, they're, when they've left college, keeping in touch with them. People tell me that if you want to tell your students that the college is closed because of the weather, the way to communicate with them is with social media. Um, and I just sense that social media's got a real role to play to keep in touch with them to find out what they're doing post-college so that you can put your hand on your heart and say your curriculum is, is fantastic. But it does need a bit of management as well as well. And of course, developing that community of learning, I noticed someone's put in the pane there about um, a closed Facebook group for each um, group of students. And I'm seeing this used a lot. It takes a bit of management, and not all staff are keen to get involved with it. But where it's used really well, um, I think it's a fantastic learning resource for communities of learning. In fact, uh, I was talking to a chap the other day who was um, doing a, a, a project um, work, and I think it was a, an engineering department where they were doing a project of repairing a car 
I think it was, and, and they, were, they were doing it as a student project. And they were using a Twitter feed to um, Twitter the progress that was being made uh, as this car was being refurbished. And of course, they got several followers, and they were tweeting photographs and all sorts of things like that. Uh, and I, I thought that, again, is, and I only heard about that the other day. I thought I was quite impressed with that as well. But you know, don't be uh, don't be under an, under any illusion. I think you know we're busy people, and all of this takes a lot of um, resource, doesn't it? Uh, but uh, I think, that for me personally, the value of it and the benefit of it is is worthwhile from a learning point of view. If we can overcome the risk adverseness that we sometimes come across in our institutions. So another question for you, really, something for you to. Uh, pop into the uh, chat pane before I share with you my final thoughts on this and this is around well what are the three barriers that you identify uh, in your institutions to embedding technology I see someone's put in staff confidence um, cultural resistance cost lack of imagination managers time they're all great things aren't they and, and, and I have to agree with all of those staff capacity I'm seeing clinging to the traditional, the age of the management, let's not go there, <laughs> conservative attitudes, conservative for the small C, I assume, fear. Um, and isn't it interesting, um, when I observe teaching and learning as an Ofsted inspector, how often do I see a teacher who, who is very risk adverse? How often do I have a conversation where someone says, you've just seen my best teacher, but today they weren't because they were scared of doing it in front of an Ofsted inspector. And how do we overcome that? That's a really very, very tricky uh, issue, but we do need to develop our confidence in our staff. So I will leave you with a final slide as to what I see as being the barriers to embedding technology. And I think you've probably said this in as many words. Teachers who are not technologists, but I think there is another side to it, which is technologists who are not teachers. And I think somehow that can be a problem in terms of how the technologists make it accessible um, to, the, to our teachers and the sorts of things you're saying here the fear of the unknown the loss of control the lack of um, the IT departments who are too risk adverse and of course the, the work pressures particularly A level people particularly you know when you're teaching to A levels you've got a lot to do and you've just got to be so focused on getting the students to the end point and um, so little time to experiment so little time to get it wrong so, uh, you know, I'll leave you with a, a final question for those of you who work in further education colleges where you're moving from being paid for success rates on qualifications to rules being paid on retention on study programs. Is that, a, is that not a fantastic opportunity which presents itself a bit of a, I wouldn't say once in a lifetime opportunity, but doesn't it offer you an opportunity to do things a bit differently and think out of the box? So there we are, I've got to the end, I'm putting the video on so those of you who didn't see me at the beginning can see, can see what I look like. You've got my email address there should you want to keep in contact, can't guarantee I'll get back to you um, immediately. Um, I hope you found that helpful, I hope you've got ideas you can take away, um, I hope maybe for those of you who are doing a good job it's reassured you. Um, it's been great, I'll, hold, I'll hand back to Lynn to, to do a few final wrap up words but um, Thank you very much. I've enjoyed that. I hope you have. Well, thank you, Alistair. That's been a really very thorough um, discussion and lots of food for thought about how we can uh, respond to uh, inspection in the future. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Uh, just a couple of things to wrap up. Um, there are There is one more webinar this afternoon um, after this one at 2 o'clock about insight into bring your own device and that agenda. And you can book via that link. Um, also, next week, if you can, it would be lovely to see you face to face and join us at one of our workshop days, either at Leicester University on Tuesday or Nottingham on Wednesday, where many of the workshops will follow up on some of the webinars that we've um, been delivering over the last couple of days. Again, booking details on the link there. Um, the presentation and the recording of this webinar will all be available along with the links to the resources and I'll try and sort of put all the stuff from the chat pane as well, I'll try and sort of consolidate that for people. Um, all our resources will be on, and quite a lot of them are already from the last few days, on our Moodle link there for you. Um, just to remind you what the GISC Regional Support Centre's 
nationally do. Um, they're supporting learning providers throughout the country to try and improve performance and efficiency through effective use of technology. And that's really all from me. And thank you very much again from Alistair. Contact details there if you need us. And you will get um, a link to a feedback report as you exit this session. And we really would appreciate your feedback. So thank you all for attending. And I hope you've got something out of it and lots of food for thought. And if I could, of course, add my own thanks as well. I noticed one of you said that the tie was still on. No, I like to be smart. <laughs> but uh, thank you very much, and very best wishes.